Um, so we're in section 7.7. And the activity, one of the one of the things in our lab slash activity has to do with fluid force today. And well, actually, the activity talks about a moment of force, and we know a little bit about moments now, so we we'll learn something about that. All right. So the first the first preliminary is fluid pressure. Fluid pressure. Um, is so the, if if an object is immersed in a liquid, that it, liquid exerts pressure on that object. So I'm going to say fluid pressure on an object at a depth h <coughs> in a liquid. is the pressure equals, I'm going to put, say, W times H, where W is the weight density. Of the liquid. And by weight density, we mean weight per volume. So a different, a different liquid is going to have a different weight density. Oil is going to have a different weight density than water. And weight, just as a reminder, weight is a measure of force. Mass is a property of the material. Weight is a measure of force. The second preliminary that we need is Pascal's principle. Pascal did a lot of studying on liquids. So pra Pascal's principle says that the pressure exerted by a fluid or liquid at a particular depth is transmitted equally in all directions and just uh, pause there for a second if the if the pressure is not transmitted equally in all directions when you submerge something in a liquid it would move around because there would be a variable pressure that would be a, that there there would be more pressure on one face of it, and it would, it, the, it would cause the object to move. So you know if you put something in still liquid, it doesn't move around. And depends only on the depth. So Pascal's principle says our pressure is the same in all directions. And the depth is the only thing that the pressure depends on. There's not, no other quantity, there's no other variable that, that the pressure is going to depend on. So we're saying um, there's nothing, that our liquid isn't flowing, the density's not changing in time. It's just, it's just a nice, calm liquid. And we know that pressure is the force per unit area. So the force that this liquid exerts on something that's immersed in it, the force exerted by the fluid, is pressure times the area at depth h. So we have some, some object that's immersed in a liquid. The force that's exerted on that liquid at a particular depth is the pressure at that particular depth 
times the area of that object. And I want to emphasize one thing for what we're talking about today. We're going to say that our depth, h, is positive. So we're going to talk about positive depth beneath a liquid. Well, this, if we think about this for a second, if we had some kind of vertical plate, some kind of vertical surface submerged in a liquid, what this tells us is that at a particular depth, we're going to have a force exerted on it. But at a different depth, there's going to be a different force. So our force exerted on this vertical plate submerged in a liquid is going to be variable. So what we're interested in today is finding the total force on some kind of vertical surface in a liquid. So like a dam that's holding some liquid, a window that's holding water in or out of some kind of vessel that's submerged, uh, the end of a tank that is full of some liquid, how much force is exerted on that end of the tank. Well, the, each little bit of area is at a different depth below the surface of that, of that liquid. So our force is going to vary with our depth. So in order to get the total force, we have to add all of those together. And we have to add things together that vary continuously. We're going to be integrating. So let's talk about how we're going to do this setup. All right, everybody good with what we're talking about so far? So there's our, our, mini, our mini physics lesson for today. Now we're going to go back to calculus. Um, so I'm going to say we're t what we're talking about is a submerged vertical surface. Our force varies with the depth. So here is my, here's the, the surface of my liquid. And we have some vertical surface that's underneath the liquid. And it's going to have some, some shape. The shape is usually the interesting thing that we have to deal with. And we're going to set up a coordinate system. So I'm going to set up, I'm just going to put my <coughs> my y-axis there, and usually, not always, usually I'm going to put my x-axis at the surface of the liquid, but not always. That's just for my setup here. So that means our um, depth equals zero is at the surface of the liquid. And I'm going to call, what we're going to do is very similar to what we did with uh, work and with centroids or centers of mass. I'm going to divide this vertical surface into little horizontal strips. And the strip is going to be with delta y. And the depth of this particular strip I'm going to call h of y because the depth as we move along this is going to vary with vary in terms of y. And I'm going to call the length of this strip l sub y. And our strip is submerged, or the, the extent of the strip goes from y equals a to y equals b. So the total force on this vertical surface is going to be the sum of the forces on each little strip. So we, we have the area of this strip, L sub y, delta y. The force depend. The force is going to. We, we find the force on that particular rectangle, and then we're going to sum the force on all those rectangles over the extent of the vertical surface. 
So again, what we're going to do, as we've done before several times, we're going to divide A, the, the interval from A to B, into subintervals. And we're going to find the little bit of force in each subinterval. So I'm going to say that <laughs> delta F sub I, so here at, we're going to say this is at Y sub I. Delta F sub I on that little rectangle is the weight density of the fluid, W, times, I'm going to write it in words first, times the depth <coughs> times the area. So in our case, that's going to be the weight density is constant. That's going to be H of Y sub I times L of Y sub I. Notice we're integrating with return to, uh, in terms of Y times delta Y. Or we're summing in terms of Y. And I'm going to say W is the weight density. So what this is saying is that when we're deeper in the liquid, the force exerted on that thing is larger. There's more liquid above us. So the total force is approximately the sum for however many intervals we divide this into of delta F sub I which is W times the sum I equals 1 to N of this quantity, H of Y sub I, L Y sub I, delta Y. Just a little more. And very similar to what we did before, now we're going to take the limit. We're going to divide this into more and more subintervals. Let n approach infinity. Let that delta y approach 0. <coughs> and our sum then becomes an integral. So the force, we're going to de define our force exerted by a fluid. And we have constant weight density. W. And again, this is per unit volume. And we have a vertical plane region. These are our, our assumptions here. Our plane region is vertical. And our, the extent of our plane region is from y equals a to b. Our force is going to be the weight density times the integral from a to b of h of y, l of y, dy. And again, just so we, we understand our notati notation, H of Y is the positive depth. Remember, depth is positive at Y. And L sub Y, or L of Y, is the horizontal <coughs> length of the region. at position Y. And much like when we talked about work and we did our we, when we did pumping problems, finding that 
vertical length, or sorry, horizontal length in terms of y, that's often the challenge. Because depending on the shape of the, the surface that we're talking about, we have to get an expression for the horizontal length in terms of y. And the way we've set this up, the length, where, oh, my drawing was up above, wasn't it? The length goes along the x-axis. So we have to come up with some kind of relationship between x and y along the, the edges of our surface. All right, questions on our setup. Shouldn't be, shouldn't it be um, anything really new and unusual? We're just applying integration to another situation. Very, uh, almost exactly the same as we've done several other times. And we'll see this argument a number of times <coughs> second semester, but we're gonna apply it to two and three dimensional objects as well. All right, so let's, uh, let's set up a couple of these, and then I want to t tell you about an, uh, kind of a shortcut that is sort of related to the theorem of Pappas. All right, so we have an isosceles right triangular plate. Its base is six feet wide. Its height is three feet. It's submerged vertically base up. two feet below the surface. Surface of a pool, I'd say. So uh, they, they, they have this triangular, um, I don't know, maybe it's an observation window, or maybe it's a, a gate that they open to drain the pool really fast, I don't know. So it's this thing, triangular shape, that's two feet below the surface of the pool. Um, we want to find the force exerted against the side, or against the plate. So we want to calculate this so that when we install this plate in the side of the pool, that we use the right, uh, the right kinds of materials, <coughs> the, the sufficient materials so that it doesn't um, when we fill it up, it doesn't break the plate out instantly. All right, so what I'm going to suggest, very, very much like we did with, um, with pumping problems or work problems, is draw a picture with a coordinate system. We need to find an expression for the length, the horizontal length of our plate as a function of y. And then we need to multiply the length times the depth and the weight density, and integrate. So we set up our integral and integrate. So we need to draw a coordinate system and find an expression for the, the horizontal length. That's, that's usually the tricky part. So let's draw a picture. Here's my isosceles right triangular plate. Here's the surface of my water up here. It says it is, uh, the base is six feet. It says, tells us that this is three feet. That's the height. This distance is six feet. And actually, I'm going to draw something else up here, so I'm going to move this down to the bottom. Uh, 
All right, based on this drawing, oh, and we have one other thing. This distance is two feet. Based on this drawing, where is going to be a convenient place to put the origin <coughs> of our coordinate system? I would suggest putting it right here. I'm going to say that's x and this is y. The other, the other place that might make sense is to put it at the surface of the water. That would work as well. You just have our, your, your, um, your limits of integration would end up being, your setup would be a little bit different, but you'd get the same result. So that's my y-axis. And this, I'm going to divide the, the plate into little horizontal rectangles. That distance is y. So if that distance is y, what is the depth there? The positive depth? What's the depth? What's the depth here at y equals zero? Five minus y. Five minus y. The depth here is five. As we go up, the depth decreases. So the depth of that little bit, I'll draw it down here. This distance is five minus y. So that's going to be my depth. The quantity that's going to that I'm going to use for my depth, five minus y. The thickness of this little bit I'm going to say is dy. And half the width, I'm going to call this x. That's half the, half the width. Horizontal length. So we need to come up with an expression for the horizontal length in terms of y. So we know our depth, we decided, is 5 minus y. How are we going to do that? We, the side of this tank is a line, right? What's a coordinate, what are the coordinates at, at this point? Zero, zero, that's at zero, zero. What is this? Three, three. So what is the equation of that line? Y equals X. So the side of the tank. Is the line Y equals X. So somehow, based on the shape of the tank, that you're going to have to be able to come up with some relationship between X and Y. The, the, the length, the horizontal length, and the, the y coordinate. All right, so the length of the strip, L of y, is going to be 2y, two, two of these. And I'm going to say the, the weight, dis, uh, weight density of water is uh, 62.4 pounds per cubic foot. And if you can't remember that, there's a little saying. Have you ever heard, a pint's a pound the world around? Yeah, that's a good way to remember the weight density of water. A pint's a pound, roughly. All right, so let's set up our integral. So our force is going to be the integral from, what are the limits of our, on limits of our integration? Zero to three. We're just integrating over the, the depth of our, or the, the extent of our plate. Zero to three, there's our, uh, I forgot my weight density. Let me put my weight density out front here, 62.4 times our depth. 
5 minus y times our length, 2y, dy. Not a bad integral to evaluate. This one doesn't turn out too bad. Sometimes, depending on the shape of the sides, they turn out more interesting. And if I calculate this out, this is an easy one to evaluate. Um, it comes out to 1684.8 pounds. Yeah, that's a lot of force being exerted on that plate. Yeah. All right, so we said that the top of the plate is two feet below the surface, and we know the plate is three feet below it. So the total at the bottom here, the depth is five. And since we set our zero, y equals zero here, as we increase our y coordinate, the depth is going to decrease. So the way I check, the way I check my, my work is I say, okay, if my depth is five minus y, when y equals 0, what is my depth? 5. And when y equals 3 at the top <coughs> of the plate, what is my depth? 2. And that's, that's the way I want it. Here I want the depth to be 5, and here I want the depth to be 2. So that's how I check to make sure I've set that up right. Uh huh. And you can do that with your, your pumping problems also do, to make sure that I'm getting, getting that set up right. All right, questions there? Now let's do one with a more interesting uh, shape, and then we'll talk about our, our shortcut. We have a cylindrical oil tank. Six six feet in diameter. And it's 10 feet long. And it's on its side. So it's like a like a train a oil tank on a train car or behind us like a semi trailer. It's half full of oil. And the oil weighs 58 pounds per cubic foot. We want to find the force on the circular end of the tank. So quick sketch here. We have a tank that looks like this, something like this. It's 10 feet long, and it is 6 feet in diameter. Does a 10 feet long have any bearing on this problem? No. That doesn't matter. Now, if we wanted to find the force exerted on this side, that would come into play. That would be a much more difficult problem. All right, let's draw a picture. Let's set up a coordinate system. Where is it going to make sense on the circular end of the tank to set up your, your, your uh, origin of your coordinate system? At the bottom? I would say at the center of the circle. Just so so. You could set it up at the bottom. You could, it, it would make for a lot more work. You'd get the same answer. But I would say set it, set your coordinate system with a circle at the center of the circle. Why? And our oil is down here, just down here. At this point, we have y equals, since our diameter is 6 feet. This is y equals negative 3. And we have y equals 0. We're dividing this lower section into little horizontal rectangles. 
of width dy, length, horizontal length x. How are we going to represent the positive depth here? If the surface of the oil is here at the x-axis, how, how can we represent our positive depth? Negative y, Negative y right? So whatever distance we go here, that's our depth, but we want it to be positive. So this distance is negative y. So our depth, our positive depth is negative y. What's the positive What's that? What's the difference between positive and negative We just, we always, when, with our setup, we always want our depth represented as a positive number. So negative depth, I guess your negative depth would be that you're not below the surface. Negative depth would be above the surface of the liquid. So we're just we want our depth always to represent the positive distance that we're below the surface of the of the liquid. So our depth equals negative y. Depth is positive. For this circle, what is x? X squared plus y squared is nine. So x equals square root of nine minus y squared. So our length, L sub y, is 2 times the square root of 9 minus y squared. Is that y? No. This? No. This? No. This? Yeah. Why? Sorry. I get excited when I draw the y, so I do the one side a little too forceful. All right, so now we, now we can set up our, our integral. This square root of 9 minus y squared looks kind of ugly, but <coughs> do we see what we're going to end up with here? A nice u sub, because our depth is negative y. So our force on the end of this tank is going to be the uh, 58, our weight density, times what are our limits of integration? Negative 3 to 0. <coughs> our depth is negative y times 2 square root of 9 minus y squared. And the, uh, we can check to make sure at y equals negative 3, my depth is 3, and that's what we want. When y equals 0, my depth is 0, so we're good. Nice easy u sub integral here. Oh, for my dy, thank you. Otherwise, we can't integrate, right? There are arguments about whether we technically ne even need to include the d something on our integrals. When we start doing multiple integration, you definitely do, because they make a big difference in how you put them in there. Um, so we, I'm not going to evaluate. We, we can evaluate this as a relatively easy integral to evaluate, and we end up with. 1,044 pounds that's being exerted on the end of that tank. That's a lot of force, 1,000 pounds. One thousand American pounds. All right, let's talk about our, our nice theorem, our shortcut. It doesn't have a special name like theorem of theorem of Pappas, but it's kind of related. So I'm just going to call it theorem. Slunk theorem, <laughs> slunk theorem 1.1. Um, fluid force. So I'm going to write this here in, in words. F, our fluid force, equals our weight density times H bar times A. And this is on a vertically submerged plate where W is the weight density of the liquid. H bar is the depth of the centroid of 
the surface. And I'm going to write center of mass, COM of surface. And A is the area of the surface. So where this comes in very handy is, for example, you have a nice shape where it's easy to find the center of mass, like, for example, a circular window below the, sea, below the level of the water in a boat or a submarine. Because we know the centroid is at the center of the circle, so here, that distance, that depth, would be h bar. This would have an area of A. So we don't have to integrate. And you can show this by setting up your, setting up your fluid force integral and show that, it's, that these two quantities are the same. Now in your homework, on problem number 23, for one specific example, you're going to derive this shortcut. So it's a circular plate submerged below the, below the surface. So you're going to do the, set, up the, set up the integral and derive this shortcut. Show that, it's, show that it's valid. And then in number 24, you use the shortcut. Um, and I call this theorem, well, I call it the COM shortcut. So you do this for, you derive the, the, the shortcut for one specific example, and then number 24, you use the shortcut. Rectangle, a circle, a triangle, a triangle. and depending on, depending if it's a nice, like an equilateral triangle or something. Other triangles, the centroid is a little harder to find, but it's not impossible. Right, not that hard. Um, yeah, any any symmetrical shape would be nice for the to use. Right, um, and the but but really, why would you want to avoid setting up and evaluating integrals? Really, why would you want to do that? Um, another another piece on your homework is that you end up with a a square plate that's submerged or that's a side of a side of a channel. What you need to do for this square plate is divide it into two pieces. So you're going to do one, one integral for this bottom piece and another integral for this top piece. And I suggest putting your coordinate system at the center of the square. You can do it the other way. Can you double into the integral and double it? You cannot because the force down here is higher than the force up there. So it's it, because it's not a symmetrical situation. It doesn't quite work that way, unfortunately. Because this one is before problem number twenty-three, so we don't we don't know the rule yet. <laughs> we have to pretend that we don't know it yet. All right. It was like it was like in pre-calc when we had to pretend we didn't know the law of sines and law of cosines oh, yeah, when we were doing w when we were doing uh, trigonometry. And a lot of a lot of times in that class we pretended that we didn't know algebra. <laughs> Right, yeah.
All right, there's that. That, yeah, that's, um, that is a very accurate statement, Dylan. 